Okay, so I believe we can start. Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. Um, you may be surprised a bit when you compare my name to the one on the paper agenda because Vladek Bielski was, was the one to deliver this session. But yeah, I'm here. Somehow it happened. So uh, welcome to this presentation titled Digital Marketing in a Big Data World. My name is Paweł Potasiński. I'm a Chief Data Architect at IT Imagination. If you don't know the company, IT Imagination is a Polish company. We probably have like 500 people on board. We are, some people call us software house, but it's not completely true because we have two, dif two different areas of, uh, of uh, our interests. So the first one I would say is data. So I'm from the data world. That's why I'm not going to, uh, uh, I'm not going to play with uh, sophisticated code, Ruby, Python, it's not, my, it's not my area. I'm more SQL guy, BI guy, stuff like this. And the other one is software development, of course, and uh, yeah, we have a lot, lots of developers, that's why we also participate in events like Code Europe. So, um, to give you a background of, of what, what, I have, what I have in common with digital marketing, I, I, I've worked for two years uh, as, a, as a product manager, product marketing manager at Microsoft. So that makes me probably uh, not the worst person to deliver this topic because I know it from the field. I know how marketing works, how hard it is to deliver good marketing, especially in a, in a world that is more demanding than ever. You know that by just doing, doing shoppings and you know, by writing your code that the world demands more and more every day. So, um, I joined, I joined Height Imagination like nine, nine months ago probably, um, and I'm doing lots of different stuff, especially I'm, I'm focused on delivering best practices around all the BI and data management teams. Also, I work close, close with uh, data science uh, department on their projects, so that's, that's why I entered this big, big data world, not just marketing one. And I'm, I have like something about, about 20 years uh, experience at the market, so that makes me probably a dinosaur. Uh, and I, and I uh, honestly advise some of you, especially the youngest developers, because you were born in the cloud, so you don't have to switch. I have to switch myself. Okay, with that, so what, is, what are the objectives of this session? Uh, number one would be probably to state some of the problems that, uh, that touch today's digital marketing, and then I will try to focus on the challenges. So what are the problems, actually? What are the problems and how, how, can, be, how can they be addressed by developers, by the guys from the big data field? And the third part would be to maybe show you some little demos of uh, those big data pieces that can be used in order to solve marketing problems. Um, also, I'm going to probably um, state several times that development is always connected to the business. If you think otherwise, you're doing something wrong. So the agenda is split it into four parts. First, I will discuss business scenarios related to marketing. Then I will discuss technical aspects, especially challenges. So what is on the way to improve digital marketing in the companies? Uh, then I will uh, try to focus on the solution architecture. And especially I will touch something called private DMP, private data management platform, uh, because that's the topic very relevant to this, to this digital marketing. And then I will serve you with some additional features. This is more like uh, showcasing you what we are doing in I at IT Imagination, uh, especially in data science department. So, the business scenarios. We are all customers. We are doing sh we are, we're shopping every, every day. Every single day we are buying something. More and more we are switching from buying off-site to buying online. So it's natural that we use more and more those. Uh, someone, someone said that uh, last year 10,000 of those were plumbed in the toilets. 
in the UK, just in UK, because we wear it everywhere. So, so that makes things difficult even for marketers. So what are the business scenarios that, that are for digital marketing today? The first one is the omnichannel. And by that, we mean focusing on things to make, to make our marketing consistent. What is marketing in general? Marketing is something that, causes, that should cause customers to be related with the company. If you sell something, if you sell like, like software, you would like your customers to be related with you because that makes you earning money, simply. So the only channel is to provide people, provide your customers with a consistent view when, when, wherever they go. So if they go to your off-site shop, you will, you will grab some data of those customers. If you go to the website, you also leave your data for some reasons. Maybe you're buying something or maybe just clicking and considering something to buy. With that, you, you are leaving your traces. Perhaps you decided to uh, add something to the basket, but then you leave the shop without buying anything. So that's the data, that's the data that can be easily, uh, easily consumed, collected, stored, and then perhaps used for bringing this, uh, this omnichannel experience to the user. We are using more and more mobiles, so so that's, that's the reason we should also focus on making this little pieces of hardware consistent with your websites, with your, with your off-site off experience. But this is not just it. Because if you, if you consider, for example, uh, things like, imagine, imagine that you're buying a pizza. Domino's Pizza is actually a good example of this. They have, an, an, uh, they have a, a mobile application that you can use for not just, not just ordering pizza. You're, you can use it for ordering your favorite pizza. Then you can use it for payment. So you do, you're doing online payment with, with the same application. But also you can track your purchase, your del del delivery of the pizza. So you may be on the way home from a hard work day. And then you just, you just track an order. And then you can... Then you can uh, if you, if you paid for the pizza, you, you can probably consume this pizza, but finally, they give you also a chance to provide their, your feedback to the system. And imagine how complicated can, this can be in terms of analytics, because we, we, we want, finally we want to land with analytics. We want to analyze all this data, starting from what's your interest, what, what is your favorite pizza? Then, uh, Perhaps what can be bought aside from this pizza? Maybe some additional, some additional uh, things in our pizza store. Then perhaps we can offer you better price. And that's also a problem that the Domino's Pizza had last time. And that, that makes me thinking that if you're a developer, always keep in mind that what you're delivering with your code impacts the money. Because in terms of Domino's Pizza, the case was simple. People, when, when the app landed, everybody was delighted. It still has good ratings. But last time, they had, they had, a, they had a problem with, rate, with ratings, especially, uh, especially on, on the mobile, because, uh, because uh, it, there, was, there were some problems with rede redeeming uh, uh, checks that, can, that could lower price. So, if you're a developer and you develop the code that somehow fails on that, the experience, uh, the experience can, uh, can be lower. And, uh, and besides, if you don't provide any, any way to give, you, to give you a feedback, you probably wouldn't even know that some, something went wrong. Now, uh, most, of those most of the data is a click stream. So uh, you collect it. You collect every single hit from the website. You can't do that physically. You, you, you just grab uh, a single click if a, if a person decided to buy or not. If a person decided to go to the right corner, to the top right corner or, or to the left 
bottom corner. By that, you can do many things around personalization. We are all different, so we demand that our shopping experience will be very personal. If, we, if you go to the offline, offline, offline store and, the, and nobody asks you uh, how, how they can help you, would you visit this, this store again? Why? <laughs> if, it's, if it's a self-service, yes. But if I buy, for example, shoes and there are plenty of shelves full of shoes and probably every second of them uh, is my size, Okay. Okay. So you see, we are different. Yeah. I said that. Okay. So we are different. But I would. I wouldn't. That's that makes me hard customer probably. I'm old fashioned a bit. So. Um, so. What is what is the uh, personalization? It it makes it makes shopping very unique because. It provides things like uh, additional shopping. So. Basket analytics. If you buy, for example, uh, a book on Amazon, good example, Amazon actually, do you know how many percent of their sales lands from, uh, from recommendations? So, you, do you, do you ever, did you, did you ever buy something on the Amazon? Any? Two of them, <laughs> three of them, four. Okay, so you know that they recommend stuff to you. If you buy a book, they will probably recommend 10, 10 others to you. So, why, why would they recommend you a book, another book? Because you may be interested in a topic, or there may be some similar topics, right? So, 30%. If you ask me how, how much they are doing from recommendations, it's 30% of their, of, the, uh, of their sales. So, it's a lot. So now, do you think it, it really matters how good those recommendations are? No. <laughs> do you believe that knowing somehow that I'm interested in SQL makes a difference? Or you're interested in Python, it doesn't make a difference. That they will that they will suggest you a Python book, not the I'm not sure JavaScript book maybe maybe it's a good maybe it's not a good example. Hmm? No, <laughs> you don't you don't believe it. So are you, so I'm I'm a bit uh, annoyed with uh, with recommendations on some of the uh, our our local um, household goods online stores. Because they, are, they always recommend something that I already bought, <laughs> like a month ago, probably. So that makes this recommendation something that is not pushing them forward. I'm probably not going to uh, buy something else from them. So that's, that's ma that makes things even worse. <laughs> it's a tough question. So did you notice that everything from omnichannel through personalization to intelligent, intelligent customer service because, because that's the third goal is related to the customer, the end user. It's all around the end user. So, the third one is customer service. There are companies, and to give you an example, uh, if, you, if you do an online payment, there is an entity that probably is transparent for you and it's an online, online payment company, like PayPal or something like that. If everything goes well with the payment, then you're happy. But you'd probably, uh, you will probably not esteem PayPal for that because that's the job, basically. But if something goes wrong, last month I, <laughs> I tried to buy a ticket for, uh, three tickets for, for a match, Poland-Uruguay football game and I struggled with some payment problems and it was 1 a.m. because I didn't have uh, you know the, the, the appropriate card to uh, to buy to buy uh, tickets earlier so I had to wait for the general the general selling and that made me annoyed because 
Really, I was waiting for the, for the next day, for early morning, sitting at night at my laptop and just clicking, you know, it's not, it's not that easy because everybody is just waiting for the same moment. And the system is, well, it's just tricky. So you have to, and I, had, I had to reserve three seats. And then I reserved my three seats and the payment went wrong. So, you know, the experience of, of, of me as an end, end user was nothing like that. I immediately changed my, for, fortunately I was able to, I changed my provider, I changed to 24. So I switched, I switched provider, I, I made my payment, but if you're a company like PayPal or something like that, you have to take care about what comes from the user as a feedback. And I'm not just, take, I'm not just, just saying that you need to collect this feedback, but you also need to engage some natural language processing and stuff like this to immediately detect that somebody is providing you the wrong feedback so that you can take some actions in order to bring back the trust because otherwise you, you probably end like a niche player. You will not be a leader if you don't, if you don't focus on taking action on negative feedback. It's said that 14 positive feedbacks can leverage a single, a single bad sentiment. So it's a, it's a huge, huge deal. And then after you, after you detect this negative feedback, and also probably the positive could be detected also, you can prioritize the, and select the optimal path. I'm not saying it's, it, it can be all done by software. No, the processes ca should be in place, but also uh, the technology can be very helpful here. So early detection of problems and threats like especially negative, negative feedback whenever your company cannot address any of those negative feedbacks earlier is crucial here. Now technical aspects. So it's all about how customers perceive us as a company. If the sentiment is good, everything is right. Everything's right. How can we address that with the technology? So first, we start with the data. So we have lots of data, actually, nowadays. We can collect practically everything. We can track a user with his cell phone, with, <laughs> with website, with whatever we want. So number one, we have our own data. It's easy. Every, every single system that we have probably stores some of the customer's data. Now it's a problem because we have Rodo on the way, GDPR, if you, if you name it differently. So you need to know where customer's data are in your organization, in your data centers, in your systems. But, it, but it's fairly easy because it's yours. Then it comes to the question, if it's appropriate to start the, anal the analytics and uh, the, the customer 360 analytics with the question, what do we have in data? Do you think it's, it's, it's okay? So let's, let's see our data, let's see what's the value of the data, and then we base on, on that. It's always wrong, actually. You, never should, you should never start with this question. You should always start with the question, what, what, are you, what, are, what are you supposed to do? What's your goal? This is your goal, let's say, uh, increase customer retention by some percent, or maybe uh, to bring some new customers on board. If that's your question, you will probably ask yourself another question. What data do I need to do that? And that makes you a step further because you will probably use some data cooperatives. NetSprint is a good, a good, a good, good example of, net of, of uh, cooperatives. So let's say you can grab some data from outside of your organization to enrich the customer's view. And then you have anonymous data stored in the market or perhaps some, some, other, some other data sources like market, uh, market uh, researchers, right? So you can, you can use all those data available to answer your question, but do not build your question based on that, the, the, the data that you own. If, you're, if you do that, you will close yourself in a box. So 
From the experience, I think that every single company has a big data problem, actually. Or the problem that can be solved by big data stuff. Doesn't really matter if you name it just Hadoop or something else. And why? Because people some, sometimes, very often, they stuck with that. I own some data and I focus on this so, so much because, because it's, it's not that easy to integrate the data from many sources that I own. That makes me blind because I don't see the, re the rest of the world. So now, from what, what is the base of the, of the, uh, of the mo modern digital marketing analytics? So usually we base on some clickstream data. It's, it's a heart of it because we are running on an online business. So we have a clickstream data. Nothing very special actually because some of those things are dictionaries, just a table. Some of them are sessions, short living tables, but still tables. Some of them are actions. So what's, what's tough in, it, in that? Hmm? So number one, the problem is that it's not the, day, it's not the relational format that we, used to, that we got used to by 30 years of history of programming. So it, it's hard to implement that in SQL, in pure SQL. That's why we have no SQL databases. Look here, you can have just the textual data mixed with some JSON files and stuff like this. So that makes things a bit harder because you don't know the structure actually. Or you may have different structures hidden inside. Then the problem is that it's not the whole story because you, you have also some different data sources that you should mix with that. You, you should merge with that. So for example, if you have a CRM system, you should find some, some Ident identity by, by may maybe using this client ID, but if it's not for identifying a person, you may end up in something like not right analytics. So that's tough. And that's still first party data. Now, the example of what we, what we want to achieve with, the, with this digital marketing and big data is customer profile 360. What is it actually? So we take internal data of every single customer we have, we mix it from, with, a, with a clickstream and maybe with a third party data and we build a broad knowledge about the customer. So that makes us able to propose new stuff to buy, to detect what is the, what is the interest of the, of the customer. And we should, we should never limit ourselves to the available information. So we should ask additional questions. If we are able to grab information whether a customer has a car, do that. It's, it's, it can be valuable depending on what you're selling or, the, or which devices are the users, um, are, are, are they using for browsing your website or, or visiting your mobile app, whatever they, whatever they do. Now, the result. The result is not necessarily obvious because uh, from, from my experience, I would build data warehouse for everything, honestly, if I, if I could. But it's not the case. It's, it's pretty hard to build from, from, uh, ha from uh, fast, fast changing, quickly changing data like Clickstream. It's very hard to build anything like data warehouse because slightly it, it requires me to implement some near real time stuff. So that's why. It's, it's, all, it's, it's often built on top of the approach of ABT. So analyt analytical based tables, which makes a simple approach actually, because it's a white table describing every single, every single um, attribute uh, about customer. So we store lots of columns. Yeah, databases, that don't, they don't like lots of columns in, in a table. And lots of rows, of course, because the number of customers can grow and even worse, because in the clickstream you can have nested data. You will see that in a moment with, a, with some simple demo of Google Analytics. So, so yeah, that makes things harder. So for, for this, for, for storing and uh, for processing this data, yeah, we need something from the big data world, actually. So, yeah, I'm a Microsoft guy, so today I feel a bit different <laughs> than usually, because I'm going to show you uh, just Google. 
so I will I will I will show you a demo of BigQuery uh, BigQuery on top of um, Google Analytics data in a minute. But yeah, technical approach if you if you're using Google Cloud Platform would be BigQuery with ABTs, and then perhaps you could go if if not with BigQuery or stuff like this. BigQuery has some advantages. It is dedicated for storing and processing big data in, in terms of the number of rows, uh, the, the, the amount of data, the volume. But also you can, you can use something more traditional like Hive, Spark, or whatever you have, the, you have on board. And then you can use different cloud for that also. So next, challenge also is uh, to find the truth about the customer because you have your customer in many places. So to find the golden record, it's actually not, new, not the new problem. It's called master data management. But in, in terms of customer, it's very special because it's, if, you ask, if you answer your, uh, this question about the golden record appropriately, you will be in a different situation. Because you would then, then you will have a single version of facts about your customer and you can identify your customer uniquely in the whole solution. So actually, systems like Google Analytics, they provide you with some, some forms of uh, unique identifiers for the, for the customers. But then you have to take care by your processes, by just, you know, uh, the order, the culture, the data culture in your, in your organization to bring the same identifi identifiers in your CRM systems or maybe build some reference tables on top of the systems. Now, simple, simple things like website personalization, wait, that's simple. Uh, companies are building millions of versions of their websites just for data, just for personalization, just, just to make that every single customer will, will feel differently on their website. And good examples are, of course, Amazon still and Allegro and many of, many of the companies around the world. Because if you just go there, you will see the website you're in your style, I would say. It's also so, so in some way dangerous because if you go too far with customization, with personalization, people may feel a bit lost because they, they saw something different yesterday. They don't find the things that, that should be there, right? So we don't like changes. But still, it's, it's needed. If you if you uh, do this uh, personalization appropriately, the success is on the way. So what, do you what, what do we have to do? We have to segment users based on the click stream, based on the data you have. Then find the best web page layout. It's not that easy because you, know, you, you, have to, you have to bring two things together, probably some of the machine learning stuff as well as, as UX design, design into play. So. It's not that easy. And then you have to implement a solution in a tool because there are tools for that or you have to create a website version for, for each user or at least provide some, uh, some, thing, some ways to customize. The risks, this can be expensive, not just in money but also in time. And also the user can be confused if you go too far. But you have plenty of tools for, to implement things around this, so you can analyze lots of click stream data with BigQuery, and you can provide the output data to things like scikit-learn or another, another machine, lang lang machine learning uh, algorithms or libraries, right? Now, segmentation algorithms are also in place for years. So k-means, naive base, or decision trees are there, nothing very new. You do the same about, uh, about, um, about rates. So conversion rates and click-through click rates. If you're doing an advertisement, then you would like people to click on that and to go to the website that you wish them to go. That's, that's the idea of advertisement online. So you still do a segmentation and you still create a, a strategy for each segment. But the, the, the target, the target um, approach that we see today is something like segment of one, which means that basically every single user should be, should be treated in, in individually. It's, he's, he's a cluster. 
So no longer, no longer build five clusters uh, in terms of dividing your customers uh, into clusters and then providing strategies. You can use the same, uh, the same tools, but also third parties. Um, it's not, it's not nothing, nothing very new. So I'm going. Wow, not good, not good. So now the problem. All the all all all, all the things that you that you uh, saw until this moment is like those are challenges. But the main challenge is that people have silos in the organizations. So. They may have data warehouse with maybe marketing automation tool on top to send emails, to send even, even personalized email. But at the same time, they probably do different stuff on their website. So like A-B tests for testing the, the new strategies, the new layouts of the website. And it's aside from the data warehouse world. And also they may have media house providing them with some digital uh, advert, 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 advertisement and things like that. So if you consider those silos, if they don't talk to each other, if they don't know about each other, you don't have 360 view. So what is the, so what is the solution? The possible solution is to have private data management platform, which means that I have something besides my data warehouse, which look, which I could consider it as a central database about everything in my company, but no. For customer-centric analytics, I would have something else that will communicate for, with data warehouse, but also that will collect something that data warehouse is not for. The clickstream itself, for example. And also that will collect third-party data as an income, as an, as an enrichment for the data. So what is, DM, what is private DMP? It's the environment for collecting and aggregating and analyzing data in the context of user, of customer, that you, that you grab from the different sources, not just from the uh, sources that you own. Now, how can you do that? Well, you can use actually dedicated systems for that. There are existing DMPs, but you can also try to implement it yourself. So this is the thesis. You can implement DMP with just open architecture, like for example Google Cloud Platform, and to give you a, <laughs> give you a short view on how how possibly you could do that, I will just provide you with a short demo of tool, a single tool. So this is Cloud, Google Cloud Platform console, and the scenario is the following. Let's assume that I have just a clickstream data from the, uh, from the um, Google Analytics. Google Analytics Premium, actually, because that provides me with lots of many, many data, many kinds of data, like uh, heat level data. So I have, uh, I, have to mimic that. I have to mimic this scenario because I don't have my own premium, uh, Google Analytics Premium um, account. So with that, just, make, just to make sure that you, that you know the real story is that I have a bucket on a Google storage that uh, serves me as a, let's say, a Google Analytics data. It's, it's the real data from Google Analytics, but just, uh, I, I, just, I just uploaded it uh, to the cloud. It's not collected automatically, but it can be collected automatically. If you configure your Google Analytics to do that, yes, it will provide, if it will, it will provide you with the uh, fresh data uh, and you will, you, will, you will be able to do analytics online, actually. So, now, the tool to make the analytics will be big query for that. And you may feel a bit uh, surprised with the interface of that. It <laughs> looks maybe more like uh, Gmail. But yeah, the interface is not, is not the best part of this tool. Actually, lots of the activities you will, you will be doing from the command line or from the APIs, maybe from the APIs more, because APIs will be used for pushing the data into the, uh, into the big query uh, tables and then to bring some results from the queries. So what I have here, I have a demo uh, called the GA demo. It's my, it's my data set and I have GA sessions table. It's actually, uh, it could be a set of tables because I, as you can see here, I have just a single day of activities recorded today. So now the details, 
Nothing very special. If you see the number of rows, it's just to over 200,000. It's probably a lot because lots of the companies would like to have that many clicks. But it's not the whole truth because the, the schema of this table, if you look closer, is a bit nested. So uh, this 200,000 is not the hits. The hits, actually, if you query the table, and you just simply uh, count I would like to share with you some thoughts on Google how they are doing their big uh, their big data stuff so yeah here's an error <laughs> does it sound familiar did you mean his hit number yeah they they have the whole wisdom they have in the search engine here so if you fail with the name of the columns or something they will just provide you with the, with the right name. So with that, let me run a, si a simple count, and then you will find that this is over a million instead of 200,000. So over a million clicks per one day, it's a lot. So I will move to the query that I prepared for this presentation. This is just a, uh, just, just a simple analytics of how my, how my customers divide by devices, by browser, browser version and screen res resolution they use for, for, uh, uh, show, for viewing my, my website. So what, I, what, do I, what, what can I bring from this analytics? For example, if I see that a single browser that should be positioned high is somewhere at the bottom, that, mo that, could, that can mean for me that I should check whether there were any compliant from the customer about the version that I produced for this particular browser, or maybe I'm not focused on this particular browser. Also, if I see uh, different, different numbers on resolutions, perhaps I'm doing something wrong with, with uh, testing the version of my website under the uh, lower or higher resolution. Let's see that. <coughs> so if I run it, it just takes like a second. And, it, and I, I, I see the results, so there, is, there, there are some numbers, yeah? So I can see that, yeah, it's a Google advertisement probably, digital marketing from Google. Yeah, Chrome is the number one, sorry for that. That's their data actually. Uh, so Chrome is number one with two versions, uh, actually sorry, with two resolutions. If I go, uh, if I scroll down and go to the bottom, uh, actually to the, to the end of the data set, I will see somewhere uh, Internet Explorer used just with version 9.0, so that means probably that this is not a well-optimized for Internet Explorer a website. But I wouldn't end with that because you ask me, okay, one million, hmm. what do you say? Actually, I could even provide you with some visualization. Yeah, this is Tableau. So this is the same data set. I can just click and see how this uh, particular version of Chrome uh, corresponded to the uh, resolutions, so you can find the, the, the correlation. It's not that easy with uh, typical uh, online, uh, online visualization tools like uh, Google Studio. There, there's no, there's no uh, cross, cross highlighting and stuff like this, but you can use just different tools for that. There are connections for BigQuery around. So I can go otherwise and see uh, which browsers are used with uh, particular uh, sc screen resolution 1440 1, 1, 4, 4, per 900, yes, so Chrome, Firefox, and Safari. Okay, so it's just, it's just a connection to, it's just a connection to BigQuery, nothing very special, they have connector, so I just copied the query that you've seen, that you have seen just uh, a second ago. Now, you, c you can now wonder, okay, but what if I go into a real big data problem? If I collect these numbers from like uh, three years maybe. So that would make, let's say, a, bi a, bi a billion rows. Let's see, let's see billion rows actually. So this was, um, sorry, this was a table uh, that uh, took under 200 megs of, of volume. Now, if I go with maybe not this, uh, maybe not this, this uh, wide table, but a bit narrower, but a bit larger. This is 31, 32 gigs actually, with one billion rows. 
if I go with the query, I have a saved query on that also. This one is not for marketing, it's about sales. So if you go with that, you will end up in seconds actually. And you, you have just scanned 30 gigs. Because uh, I, what I read here is a month of, uh, of three and a half years, so it's not very selective query. In fact, it doesn't really matter because it co it's a column store and distributed something, serverless database, right? It uses column store and, and distributed tree, uh, tree distribution. So yeah, that, make, that makes things fast. But there are some caveats. If you test it against typical database, wor data warehouse stuff, like you have a large table and a large table and you try to join that, you may end up in minutes instead of seconds and that will cost you because every single query costs you something if you go beyond one terabyte of data uh, or one, or, or, uh, yeah, one terabyte uh, in, a, in a test month. So they have pretty, pretty high uh, pretty high limits for free testing, but if you meet those uh, those uh, those limits, you will be charged, and also uh, yeah, and also you will you'll be charged for uh, uh, loading data in line. So if you if you push the data directly from the from the Google Analytics, yeah, expect that there, there will be probably some some payment on the way, but not that high as the as the one for the scanning the la the huge amount of data. But yeah, 32 gigs in a, in a second. And you can, you can see uh, that this is not the problem for, uh, for, those, for those tools. Now, let me switch back to the slides and uh, yeah. So now, you can go further with technology and big data because you, you not only have things for, for, uh, for processing huge amounts of data, but also you can pr propose some predictive analytics, but also you can propose something like uh, image processing, for example. So big data is not about just collecting text data, JSON files, clickstream, and things that you can read. It's more about the things that you cannot read easily. You, sh you have to describe it by your words, and then you can do something about uh, interaction with the customer. But based on the picture, what can you do? First, you have to have some tags, some, some kind of description, and then you, have to, you, you can interact. That's why we use TensorFlow and GCP for doing things like this. So the task here was we had some uh, small data set of pictures from the uh, Instagram in that case, and the goal was to detect the particular bottle of perfumes or, or liquids. So we used a a pre-trained a pre, uh, um, algorithms. So yeah, they, they have a zoo of the algorithms in terms of flow. So we use inception uh, to uh, detect first the bottles. So we split this task in, uh, in several steps, like detecting the general bottle, as you can see on this first picture, then detecting a particular, uh, a particular bottle, and then the third, the third part and the most interesting part of this task was to, uh, to um, uh, detect how much area of the whole picture my bottle takes. So it was positioning on the, you know, some blo blogs, uh, advertisement and stuff like this. If you want to see how this was performed, I'm not going to, to bother you with uh, Python code underneath, but I have a recording on that. I just, I just cannot switch to Linux immediately here. So, so first of all, we have like a bottle. This is, uh, Bioderma is not a real name, it's just for the demo purposes here, but it's a real case uh, at one of, the, one of the customers. So we have uh, two bottles on a, on a screen. Of course, underneath we have a set. It's not big, it's like 3,000 pictures that is tagged properly, and it was a manual job, sorry. We, you have to do that with, with uh, your, your own uh, pictures. But then we used also a pre-trained, uh, as I mentioned, a pre-trained uh, neural network, convol convolutional neural network to, uh, that, that already had some information in it. So it was also uh, transfer learning, yes? And then, first of all, we detect the bottles. Yeah, sorry for that, it's a, a single machine uh, workload, so 
It's not that fast as you, as, you could, as you can imagine if I put this on the cloud, it would be like 20 times faster or so. So, come on, I will just try to move it forward a bit. Yeah, so, so the first task, when it completes, yeah, I have two bottles detected. That's, what, that's my first step. Then if I detect two bottles, I have these segments that are, let's say, candidates. Candidates for the detecting the bioderma bottle. So then I run another script, another part of the, of the experiment, let's say, to detect the <laughs> appropriate bottle. Sorry. Yeah. So now I have my bioderma detected, and I have this border that will uh, just uh, uh, isolate the area where the bottle is presented, and then I can put a mask. It's another, another script, another, another, another part of the algorithm that put, uh, put the mask and I can calculate the area taken by the, by the picture. So you can see that it's not just about the analytics. It's more about using the pre-configured, pre-learned uh, algorithms and, and available libraries. Of course, you should know how they are performing, how they are doing. So for example, those um, those um, inception uh, algorithms were m way faster and way better than Google Vision API, for example. We tested both, and sorry, the results were just crashing. And it was just a, just, just a winner. This algorithm uh, won some uh, contest last year, so that's why we also uh, were attempting to use that. Yeah, so with that, keep in mind that problems in digital marketing are not just about... Uh, doing typical things like collecting the data about your customers. You have to think about what your customers are doing in your offline stores, in your, on your websites, in your, in your apps. Everything should be consistent. Everything should bring you information that will enrich customers' view. Then you have to present the other way back, a consistent view to the customer. If you present a consistent view to the customer, and you give, you give the customer a way to provide you a feedback, then you're talking. And it's, all, and it's all about the dialogue. It never works if you have just, just, if you're just sending the message. If you send an email, if you don't provide an individual title, you have 26% less that they will click this particular email. <laughs> yeah. So with that, here you have some resources. Uh, you can find more details on uh, what our data science team uh, have done in terms of this deep learning solution uh, based, on, based on inception. And also, I encourage you to look at the um, uh, nice tutorial on how you can use, uh, how you can use Google Cloud Platform along, along with uh, some Spark and some, uh, some R, R code to provide predictive analytics on top of BigQuery data. So, with that, thank you for joining me at this session and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you.